Welcome to Cindy's Library. This is Cindy. And today I am going to talk about what I finished in the month of September. So, second half of the month was interesting since I spent some time out of town, but I also found some time for reading. Starting with Death Comes for the Archbishop by Willa Cather. I want to do a full review of this one, but suffice it to say, I loved it. Um, this is primarily the story of Father Jean-Marie Latour. And this is shortly after Texas, I believe, was annexed to the United States. So the authorities at Rome decided that this area that had just been uh, ceded, won by the United States from Mexico, should have be its own diocese as compared to Mexico proper. And this uh, seat was in San Francisco, or not San Francisco, Santa Fe. And so they send this bishop. A uh, bit of a rough start. I think it takes him over a year to even get to Santa Fe. Then he's not the most warmly welcomed. But he goes on from there, solves the initial issues, solve other issues as they arrive, uh, things as they change, like the Gadsden purchase is added to his diocese, not sure how you say that, and things like that, talks about the people he meets, those he works with, those in the areas he is over, and Lilla Catheter is an amazing author, let's just say that. So, in the end, death does come for the Archbishop, but not until after a very long and full and useful and probably more happy than not life. So, there's that one. I also read Why We Love Middle Earth by the Prancing Pony podcast guys, Sean Marchese and Alan Sisto, in which they talk about the books, they talk about adaptations, they talk about the Tolkien fandom. Uh, this is supposed to be a primer for those new to Middle Earth, and it certainly would uh, work well for that. I'm not sure there are any great uh, new discoveries or anything like this in here. Didn't matter. This book replicates as much as possible in a book, the tone of the podcast. And this is wonderful, including footnotes, not just normal footnotes citing their references, but uh, their own commentary and digressions. Although the footnotes are not all the only places where their digressions are. Absolutely loved it. Very fun time. Excellent addition to works about Middle Earth. Next, I read Leaf by Niggle by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. This, of course, is a reread. I think I uh, already did a full review of this. Try to remember to link that. But in any case, loved it as much as ever. As Niggle himself would say, it is a gift. Next, I finished Pilgrim's Inn, which is the 
second book in the Elliot Family Trilogy by Elizabeth Googe. So, I uh, want to say this is maybe 10 years after the first book. So, World War II has happened. So, rough times on everyone. Um, for David Elliot, uh, the war was especially rough. So, of course, that's rough on his grandmother. And never since the big decision he made with Nadine at the end of the first book has he been so close to uh, deciding against that decision. Same with Nadine on her side. Uh, she wasn't actually in the war herself like David was, but things were rough on the home front. Uh, her husband is actually a general. Fortunately, he seems to have been mostly kept at London, that type of general, uh, doing the initial planning type things, sounds like, but still very rough on her. And having twins did not help. But, uh, Nadine and George and their family, uh, they end up, uh, much to uh, Nadine's surprise, uh, buying an inn, uh, the Herb of Grace. And, uh, well, things go on from there. There are new characters. Uh, I can say that the Herb of Grace seems to have been a positive change in the George Elliot family, but I'll leave you to read all of the wonderful details like the way Elizabeth Googe does. If anything, I think I liked this better than the first book, uh, the bird in the tree, I want to say. So, looking forward to book three. And finally, <laughs> Antony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. Ah, for Shake Tamber. <laughs> what to say? This has already been commented on by several other people, but it was an interesting choice to put besides Romeo and Juliet. Uh, because we have two star-crossed lovers, two, actually maybe even more than two sides here, that make it impossible for things to be the way the two lovers want. It's a tragedy. Ah, it is very, well, historical accuracy. I don't know how far that goes. Though to be fair to Shakespeare, it seems he uh, based a lot of this insofar as it is historically accurate on Plutarch's lives. But, it's interesting, he created an Antony. You can totally understand how amazing as a mi military leader he is and why men follow him. You can also understand the weakness that keeps him tied to Cleopatra when then. It's not necessarily the wisest thing to do. And Cleopatra, she just chews up every scene she is in. Um, whatever attraction there is to her, well, there may be physical attraction, 
But that's not the only thing. In fact, it may not only be the primary thing. She uh, manipulates. She uh, will beg one moment and upbraid the next moment. Can profess undying love and complain how Antony doesn't love her, and if he did, he would stay with her, and, uh, and the ending on Anthony's side is rather ironic. Uh, Cleopatra's death, you are left with some questions. Specifically, the biggest question is, uh, what was her primary motivation in committing suicide? Because uh, there are a couple of forces at work there, and either it's hard to tell exactly which is the bigger one. Um, would she have stayed alive if Anthony had Antony had stayed alive? Good question. Would she have stayed alive if she had not been captured by Octavius Caesar? Another good question. So, anyway, that is what I read for the second half of September. Overall, a good reading month. I think I have perhaps a couple new favorites. We'll have to see if I'm still feeling that way by the end of the year. How was your reading month in September? Love to hear about it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly do appreciate it. So, until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy, and as always, happy reading!